All right, uh, welcome uh, learners. This is the third lesson on grade 11 analytical geometry. Today we are looking at parallel and perpendicular lines and the effect that it has on gradients. Um, so this is something you should know. It's used a lot in grade 11 and grade 12. Um, just be aware of this. Um, parallel lines have the same gradient. So if the gradients of two lines are equal, the gradient if you think of y is equal to mx plus c in straight lines, that n is the gradient. And we also worked now with most the gradient formula, which is difference in y over difference in x, um, that gradient between two points. So if for one line I work out the gradient and another line I work out the, also the gradient and the two gradients are equal to one another, I know these lines are parallel. Or if I have information somehow that the lines are parallel, then I can assume that the gradients will be the same. Um, and then for perpendicular lines, the gradients multiplied are negative 1. So if you take a 1 gradient and you multiply it with the other gradient of the other line um, for perpendicular lines, if you multiply this gradient, let me, let me just quickly draw two lines there. If I multiply the gradient of this line with the gradient of this line, it should always give me negative 1 if these lines are perpendicular. All right. Um, then something you'll see from time to time, not often, but it's just good to take note of so you're not freaked out when you see that. Uh, collinear points. Collinear means they lie in the same straight line. You see co together linear on the same line, right? Together on the same line points. So if I want to show that ABC um, lies on the same line, so I have three points there, but I want to know whether they actually lie on one line or does the line that goes through two of them miss the other one. So to do that, you need to check that the gradient of this two points is the same as the gradient of those two points, or the gradients of this two the same as the gradient. You can take any two points and any two points. So these two and those two, or these two and those two, doesn't really matter. Um, but to show that it's um, collinear, then you must show the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of BC, or the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of AC, which you see there's always one point shared between the two. Um, it's like parallel lines, but it's not AB and CD. You see it's AB and AC. Since it goes through the same point and they are well parallel, then it is collinear. Parallel lines going through a shared point somewhere must lie on the same straight line. Then. Okay. Um, right, so let's jump in with exercise 2. This is mostly about parallel perpendicular lines, working with gradients that are equal or multiplied to negative 1. And the first question is just dipping our toes into the water with this work. So it says calculate the gradients of A, B and C, D in each case. And then state whether A, B and C, D are parallel or perpendicular or neither. So um, let's do number A and B and then you can do number C and D on your own. Number A, um, I have the point 2, negative 1 and 5, negative 3 that I want to calculate the gradient of. So I'm going to start there. Exercise 2 on page 67. Um, A is the point 2, negative 1. B is the point 5, negative 3. And then the gradient of AB. Yet again, if you need to write your coordinates, ach, your x, y, um, x, y, and the formula first, pause the video, do that. I'm just going to substitute straight in here um, and then type that into my calculator. So I have negative 2 over 3. Um, negative 2 over 3 is the gradient of A, B. Right, and then the gradient of C, D in the same question the C is given as negative 1, 1, and the D is given as negative 4, 3. So I'm also going to calculate the gradient of C, D. Uh, what I want to do here is to determine whether these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So I need to look at the gradients here. So yet again, if you need to pause and do your thing first, that's fine. 
um, and this is 2 over negative 3, so negative 2 over 3 as well. And you see, since my gradients are the same, um, gradients that are equal means I have parallel lines. All right, so since I have that MAB is equal to MCD, they are both negative 2 over 3, you see it's the same thing, that means that AB is parallel to CD. Okay, let's look at question B, same type of thing, I have the point A, 4, 2, and B, negative 1, negative 2, so I'm going to quickly find the gradient of A, B, which is going to be negative 2 minus 2 over negative 1 minus 4, that's negative 4 over negative 5, so 4 over 5, and then C, um, D, C is the point 2, 0, and D is the point 10 minus 10. So I'm going to work out the gradient of CD. Uh, it's negative 10 minus 0 over 10 minus 2 is negative 10 over 8. So negative 5 over 4, negative 5 over 4, like that. Okay, and this is obviously not equal, so I don't have parallel lines here. Now the next thing I want to do is check for perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines, I want to take the gradients and multiply them with one another, right? Because perpen this is not parallel because the gradients are definitely not equal. I can see that. For parallel lines, I need to do another step. I need to go multiply the gradients and check if that gives me negative 1. Then I know the lines are perpendicular. So I multiply the two gradients. It's going to be 4 over 5 times negative 5 over 4. And that does give me negative 1 indeed. Now since the gradients multiplied gives me negative 1, that means that AB is perpendicular to CD. Alright, so I'm not going to do C and D, you can do them on your own, but um, to check whether they are parallel, perpendicular or neither, if the gradients are the same it's parallel, if you multiply the two gradients and it gives you negative 1, it's perpendicular, um, if you multiply the gradients and give you anything else than negative 1, say it gives you 0 or 2 or negative 5 or anything other than negative 1, the, it's not perpendicular, so then your answer will be neither. Right, um, let's look at question 2 on the other side. This is more exciting stuff. Um, it's just a bit more difficult and a bit more on the level of grade 11 work. It says calculate the gradient of AB, then write down the gradient of a line perpendicular to AB. Right, so I'm going to do one of them. Um, I'm going to leave number B and C for you. Let me just do number 2A and then we'll also look at question 3. Um, number 2A here, I have the points A, 6 minus 4 and B, 3, 1. And they want me to um, calculate the gradient of AB and then write down the gradient of a line perpendicular to this one. Okay, so I'm just going to calculate the gradient of AB first, which is going to be 1 minus negative 4 over 3 minus 6. You can put this in your calculator. It's negative 5 over 3. So I've got the gradient there of AB and then they want me to calculate the gradient of another line perpendicular. So I know that the gradient of AB times the gradient of this perpendicular line um, should be equal to negative 1. So the gradient of AB is negative 5 over 3 times the gradient of this perpendicular line should be equal to negative 1 and then since this is multiplied to take it to the other side I can divide. So the gradient of this perpendicular line is going to be negative 1 divided by negative 5 over 3 and if you type this into your calculator 
the gradient of the perpendicular line should be positive 3 over 5. Right, so you can do number B and C on your own. Let's uh, finish off with something from question 3. It says, calculate the value of x in each case if a, b, c, d are the points 3, 4, minus 1, 7, x minus 1, 1, 8, and then they want you to calculate the value of x if a, b is parallel to c, d, if a, b is perpendicular, if b, c, and d are collinear. So here we encounter the collinear thing. Um, I'm going to do the entire question 3. Um, obviously, you see a, b is going together a lot, so I'm going to work out the gradient of a, b, and c, d quickly first in terms of x and what we have here. So let's start with that. Um, the gradient of a, b, if you want to do that first, pause the video, work that out, quickly check the coordinates, um, pause the video, check the coordinates, work out the gradient of a, b, work out the gradient of c, d, and then you compare with the answer that I get. Okay, so after you've paused and worked out, um, you should get that the gradient of IB is 3 over negative 3 over 4, and the gradient of CD is 9 over 1 minus x. 9 over 1 minus x. Okay, I hope you got that. Now, the first thing I want to do is calculate the value of x for question A. If AB is parallel to CD, now if AB is parallel to CD, the gradients of these two lines, the gradient of AB and the gradient of CD should be the same. So I'm going to make this equal. Then I have negative, uh, let me just put the negative with the 3, negative 3 over 4 is 9 over 1 minus x, because I want to cross multiply, and then if the negative is standing there, I'm just scared that I'm missing it somewhere in the cross multiplication. So cross multiply negative 3 times 1 minus x is equal to 4 times 9, which is 36. Multiply this in, you get minus 3 plus 3x is 36. Jump the 3 over to the other side, that's going to be 39, and then the x is going to be um, divide by 3, divide by 3, x is 13. Okay, so if AB is parallel to CD, if um, AB is perpendicular to CD, the scenario is that the gradient of AB times the gradient of CD should be negative 1. For perpendicular lines, the gradients multiplied should give you negative 1. So I'm going to take the gradient of AB, which is negative 3 over 4, times the gradient of CD, which is 9 over 1 minus x. 9 over 1 minus x should give me negative 1. Okay, um, to multiply fractions, you can multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom and make this one fraction and then make that equal. Or you can just take this and divide it on the other side. I'm going to do that. So I have 9 over 1 minus x. Then on the other side, I have minus 1 divided by negative 3 over 4. You can use your calculator if you want. That gives you positive 4 over 3. And then... I'm going to cross multiply here, so um, 1 minus x times 4 is 4, 1 minus x, and 9 times 3, 27. Multiply in, so I've got 4 minus 4x is 27, and if I take the 4 over, I get minus 31, and then divide by negative 4 both sides, then I have 31 over um, 4. x is 31 over 4, which is a bit weird, but I'm going to leave it like that. 31 over 4. Um, okay, 
Nope, 27 minus 4 there, I made a mistake. Sorry about that. Minus 4x. 27 minus 4 is 23. Twenty-three. So then x is negative twenty-three over four. Is that correct now? I think so. Okay. All right. So let's parallel perpendicular. The last question here is um, if B, C, and D are collinear. So I already have the gradient of C, D. I'm going to work with that um, to to work with collinear lines. Um, let me just quickly look here. Um, collinear lines, I need two of the gradients, say BC and CD or CD and BD or something, any two of these gradients to be equal. Now I already have CD worked out here. The other one I'm going to use, um, I'm just going to use BD instead of BC and CD because if I have BC, then I also have an X in that. Um, I'd rather type BD because that's all number values and that's going to give me a easier thing to work with. So quickly work out the gradient of BD, pause the video, work out the gradient of BD and then you can compare with me. Okay, so if you pause the video now, um, you should get the gradient of BD as a half. And then, so what I want to do, you can take from B, C, and D, any two combinations should be fine. So I've got B, D, and C, D. The reason I chose B, D is because it's got number values. It's just going to make it easier to calculate. So what I want to do is, for collinear points, I want the gradient of um, CD to be equal to the gradient of BD. So the gradient of CD I worked out earlier as 9 over 1 minus X and the gradient of BD I just worked out as a half and then I'm going to cross multiply here 1 times 1 minus X is just 1 minus X 9 times 2 is 18 I'm going to take the um, Oh, let's take the 1 over, so I've got 18 minus 1, which is 17. If negative x is 17, divide by a negative both sides, then x is going to be negative 17. There we go. Okay, so that is um, the third lesson in this mini-series of the grade 11 work. I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you in the next video.